I've watched many, many um, videos on TED, um, all of which have shaped my entrepreneurial thinking, my emotional intelligence, and all in all, they've encouraged me to become a better person. So once again, it's um, an honor to be here. I would also like to thank my colleagues that helped me to put together the speech. This is like the seventh version of the speech. Um, so most especially um, David, F.A. Yunis, and Pelumi. Okay. The first video I ever watched on TEDx was that of um, Chilamanda Adichie, where she spoke about um, the dangers of a single story. And one of the key takeaways from that presentation was that if you only hear a single story, it leads to default assumptions or conclusions and decisions which might be incomplete, and which also means that you have um, a misunderstanding of the whole situation. And that kind of sets the basis of the talk that I wanted to um, give today. I don't know if any of you have ever Googled life in um, Africa. If you ever Googled life in Africa, what you'd normally see is um, you see these huts, you see these villages, you see calabashes, you see children with big bellies and flies over their head. Whereas if you Google life in America, you'll see, oh yeah, there you go. This is what you get when you Google life in um, Africa. If you Google life in um, America, if you bring that up to you. <laughs> There's a big difference, okay? And again, this, this, is, um, this sets the foundation of my talk today. Um, the basis of my own talk and the title of my talk is how we can redefine the image of Nigeria in a bid to attract investments. This topic is very important to me because I sincerely believe in the potential of Nigeria. And I think this has now set the basis of my existence. But that wasn't always the case. So I'll tell you a quick story, um, I'll, um, give you some background. As you can probably tell, um, I, was born up, I was born and raised in the UK. I grew up in the 90s. And during that time in the UK, being African, especially Nigerian, wasn't very cool. In fact, many of us remixed our names to become more Jamaican. We wanted to be Jamaican because being Nigerian at that time wasn't very um, attractive. And I remember hating Black History Month during school because that was the time you'd get a lot of sympathy, and I'm not really a big fan of sympathy. And anything that spoke of African history, especially in primary school, was never uplifting. To make things worse, they used to have these um, fundraisers that they used to do for, at that time, the poor people of Africa. And they would go around, you know, it was usually Oxfam and the likes, that go around and have these pictures of children with flies over their head, and you know, we'd have to contribute one pound every week to support the people of Africa. So being um, Nigerian or African at that time, it was never really something to be proud of per se, because even in school, we were made to feel like paupers. And then the news that you'd also get from Africa at that time was also not very um, uplifting, and quite often it was demeaning or condescending. So that ultimately affected my perspective of Africa during that particular time. I had no interest in Africa. This perception, however, began to change, um, especially through the emergence of Afrobeats in the UK. I remember the time that like, Debange was raining and um, one day Cole, Mohit, and all of that kind of began to, people began to want to relate to um, being Nigerian. And slowly, many of us abandoned our Jamaican names that we had made for ourselves and began to accept our Nigerian names. Um, as, time goes, as time went along, when I got to university, my image of Africa also improved. Um, around that time, I used to organize parties, and they were, they were really good parties at the time. I, I can say that confidently. And um, being, the, being a party promoter, I had the pleasure of meeting all types of people, but most especially Nigerians that had come from Nigeria to study in the UK. Aside from the fact that they were willing to pay more for my parties, which was always a good thing, they wanted to get tables, they wanted champagne, they wanted a very good party, and as a promoter, that's the stuff you want to hear. But um, aside from that, it was interesting to see how many of them were very, very intelligent, 
very hard working and they wanted to take the learners that they had learned at university back to Nigeria. And in addition to that, many of them were actually paying almost three times more in school fees than we were, which then obviously made me realize that, okay, Nigeria is not as poor as I was made to believe um, growing up. So I remember telling my mom that, okay, yes, I want to go back to Nigeria. I want to go and, you know, get to know my roots. And when I told her, she, was, she wasn't was very, very happy, actually, um, especially since I wanted to go with her. Um, she didn't allow me, okay, initially, but I'm very, very persistent. So eventually, um, she agreed that I could go to Ghana instead of Nigeria. She didn't think I was smart enough for Nigeria to be there without her. So she said, okay, fine, manage Ghana. And at that time, we had family there, so Ghana was, um, Ghana was okay for me to go to. And in her mind, she felt, and at, time, at that time, I was very, very persistent. I really want to you know, go back to Africa, so on and so forth. And in her mind, she had successfully japad from Nigeria, only for her firstborn to be so eager to go back to the trenches where she had come from. So, you know, she wasn't very pleased that, you know. But anyway, like I said, she um, allowed me to go to Ghana, okay? And, when I, and in time, I eventually visited Nigeria. And what I began to realize with the more time that I spent here is that for every challenge in Nigeria, there's a significant opportunity. There's a significant business opportunity. And it was that, it was that um, realization that made me found Welcome to Africa International, um, a company which you know, facilitates trade and investment. And by doing all of this, we hope that we can also change the narrative. From doing all these conferences around um, the world, what we've always found is that there's an increase in the delegates that come. And what that goes to show is that despite all the challenges, there's still some people that are actually interested in the opportunities. So, and through the work that we've done over the years, we've been able to facilitate trade and investment indirectly um, and directly to the tunes of millions of dollars. So you can only imagine the type of impact that would have. And we've been able to successfully engage investors in different parts of the world. And um, as an organization, we've been able to grow. And that goes to show that despite all the challenges that, that exist in Nigeria, there's still a lot of potential. And there's people still thriving. And I think these are some of the things that we need to, um, we need to pay more attention to. The truth of the matter is that Nigeria has opportunities across all the sectors, particularly in respect to mechanization, processing, manufacturing. Nigeria actually has the potential to become an industry leader. We can actually pioneer into industrialization. And if, if, we, if we look at some of the facts when it comes to Nigeria, Nigeria is actually one of the few countries that has 34 million um, hectares of available land. Did you know that leather from Kano is used by such brands as Louis Vuitton, Gucci, and the likes? Nigeria is one of the few places that has over 40 types of solid mi minerals, including gold, silver, and gemstones. Despite all the challenges, Nigerian companies are still raising a significant amount of of investments. In fact, more recently, Fry by Greek raised over $56 million to support agribusiness in Nigeria. In addition to that, factories are being set up despite the challenges. There's actually so much going on in the country, depending on where you decide to look. And I believe that we need to do more to project more of these positive stories. If we do showcase these opportunities and these positive stories, that should um, slowly but surely begin to attract investments into the country. So yes, the challenges do exist. Um, I'm not disputing that the challenges aren't there. They are there, truly. But the truth of the matter is, there's challenges all over the world, okay? No matter where, even if you want to go to the almighty Canada, there's challenges there too, or America, or whatever the case may be. So we need to do more to recognize the good that's happening in Nigeria. Um, and we're not just that, we need to do more to project a positive image of the country. And if we continue to do that, um, I sincerely belie believe that this will um, change the way people see Nigeria and ultimately um, attract investments into the country. And we need to be the pioneers of that. 
So that's the end of my talk. Thank you so much for listening.